Yo. Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you how to set up your Facebook business account and what all the little tools inside of it are. And I'm going to give you guys a little tour of my Facebook uh, business account. So first off, you're going to start off by signing in to, if you do not have a Facebook, I would recommend that you get one. This is where you would sign up, put all your information here. Um, but if you do have a Facebook, just log in. Okay, and then after you log in, we're gonna go over here and you're going to create your Facebook business account. Um, if you do not, so what you would do is you would go to business.facebook.com and if you already have a Facebook account, all you would have to do is just link it and it would automatically take you to you know activating that Facebook for business account. But if you do not, um, I suggest you log in first. It is your same information that you would use for your regular Facebook is where you would log in here. So um, after you've done that, it shows up on the side. So you would press this button here and then your business manager will be there. The business manager is kind of the area where you see all of your Facebook fan page, you can see how your ads were delivering and you can see, you know, what's going on on all across the board with all of your pages. So as you can see in two of my ad accounts, you can see the reach. Um, okay, so um, as I was saying, so this is, gives you an account um, overview of every single one of your different Facebook fan pages and your ad accounts. Let me refresh this. So as you can see, um, you know, this shows you your activity for your ads that you're putting out and the activity that's happening on your pages. And then these are also um, product catalogs that come from my Shopify store that are connected to my Facebook. So these are the tools that are inside the business manager. Um, we're gonna start off one by one. I'm gonna show you um, some of the most important tools that I use. We're gonna start off first with pixels. So here in the pixel is where um, your traffic is being tracked uh, by Facebook. So on my Shopify store, I place my pixel in order to track how many people are going through my store. Um, these are the different events that happen inside your pixel. So if a person views a page or if they view content, you can also add actions. So how you find your pixel is you click actions, the drop down menu, you click view pixel code, and installing your pixel will be different for each and every um, Thing that you're using it for for Shopify is very simple. It's just um, an accumulative of numbers. Um, if you have something like a landing page or a you know a, a page of some kind where people are putting in their information, um, you will more than likely have to use the entire code. Um, like if you're using ClickFunnels or something like that, you're going to have to use the entire code, and you're also going to ha have to add pieces to the code like. Um, lead or add to cart or purchase in order for you know Facebook pixel to track it here and the wonderful thing is is that when it comes to making ads the pixel is very important that you have it installed correctly uh -oh. reload it but the pixel is important when you want to um, do ads because of the simple fact that when people are continuously coming to your store or clicking your link and they didn't buy anything, you use the information from that pixel, from that specific um, link that you put out in your ad to retarget those same group of people. I'll probably put up a picture of what it looks like later um, somewhere in here. <laughs> but um, yeah, but that's what the pixel does. 
and you can have more than one uh, account for your pixels. So I have two that I actually use, mainly because I have two stores, and it it um, tracks, you know, when people add stuff to cart, when people view it, and you can and it breaks it down by URLs as well. So however many times a person is um, clicking said link based on what URL, which is good, and even by domain you can check. So this is good. And as you can see, you have, I have my checkout at Shopify, I have my second um, Shopify store. This is my first Shopify store, and this is my blog. So I have a lot of people who are clicking um, different links to get to my different Shopify stores. So this is really, really cool. Okay, so next we're going to go to Power Editor. The Power Editor is where you would create your ads. Um, there, are, there is another place where you can do it. It is Ads Manager. I do not suggest that you do it in there. It doesn't give you as much um, grounds to do what you can actually do in Power Editor. In Power Editor, you can make your ads in bulk. Um, so you would first create a campaign, and you would click Create a Campaign. And here in this campaign is basically where, what you want your ad to do. Do you want to boost your post? Do you want to promote your page? Do you want to reach people near your business, increase brand awareness, send people directly to your website, um, get installs on your app, raise tennis for your event, video views, collecting leads, increase conversions. And when you're doing increasing conversions, your pixel is very important because that tracking is it tracks the conversion that you want. So if you want people to add stuff to your cart, you're more than likely, you get, when you do increase conversions, um, you have to pay for the impressions and the conversion. So if out of 600 people, 200 are um, clicking your link or they're viewing your content or they become a lead or if they add something to their cart or even if they purchase, that is a conversion and you're paying for that conversion plus you're paying for the impressions um i've gotten up to the point where i've gotten nine cents a conversion um and you can get even lower there are some people who can even get um penny conversions but um it takes a, a good amount of skill and it takes having the right kind of ad to the right kind of audience and yes so these are your marketing objectives. You know, what do you want to do with your ad? And here in Power Editor, it's so much easier to create an ad because you can separate it by, um, by these three things here. So if I wanna tweak something about my campaign, I can just simply click on campaign and tweak that. So we're gonna close this. So right here on the side, if I did create an ad, it would show up in these columns. And by one ad, there should be um, a one marked in each one of these sections. So if I wanted to fix the ad set, and the ad set is basically who you're targeting and how you're targeting them. So who you're targeting is based on, let's see, let's go back. I'm gonna do a whole other video for you guys. Let's click some people's website, we're gonna continue. So this is your ad set. This is where you say, you know, if you want to focus on just the United States, um, their age, their gender, what language they speak, and their interests. The more interest that you put in the here, the more this number will go down, and the more it will you know, hone in on that audience. I do suggest that you do not go below a double digit million. So like 10 million, six, like 16 million, something like that. You stay in the millions because the more you try to chunk down your, your niche, the less people you'll be able to reach. So even if you do an ad and it's got, you think there's only, oh, there's only 20,000 people or there's only 100,000 people in this audience, 
you never know um, if that audience will really want to click because th that could be something where you do an ad and no one clicks on your video in that tiny audience. It's better to have a larger audience and a more broader audience than to get real specific. And then this is where you show where you want to have your ad. So when you take away these, it also brings down the number just a little bit. Um, audience network and mobile feed, um, I like to use those the most because people are on their phone with Facebook um, a lot during the day. And you can choose to even do multiples of the same ad and then go in and just edit, you know, maybe I just want to have three ads on mobile and then have three ads on desktop. And then you can say, then I want to have three ads just on Instagram and then just kind of see where your audience is mostly and where they are and how they can, you know, and how they work really. And then this is down here where you do your schedule and your budget. I, when I'm first doing ads, I always do $5 a day and you run it continuously. I say run your ad, run any new ad for three days to really see how it works. Because if it doesn't look like it's working on the first day, don't just cut it off. Give it some time and continuously check it. So the wonderful thing is, is that you don't have to be on your laptop to check this. You can go on your phone and you can see, um, there's an app for it and I'll probably put it up somewhere around here um, to show you. But there's an app for your phone where you can check it on the go. You know, you don't have to be glued to a computer to do this. So this part, um, I like to leave it the way it is. Um, I like to leave my link clicks the same and I like to have an automatic bid amount. There are some people who will tell you to do manual. It depends on your preference. I suggest you test to see if you like it better with automatic or if you do bid. Um, when you do manual bid, it kind of looks like this. And this is basically saying that this is how much you would pay for um, per person to click your link. And Facebook looks at that and they're like, okay, so this is a good idea. And they want, if it's a high bid amount, they will kind of push your ad to the forefront of everyone else's. If they believe that you would pay this much per person to click your link. Um, and same thing with this, I leave this all the same. And you can give it a specific ad set name. Um, this is especially good if you're doing bulk ads and, you're, and you wanna separate them. Um, the same thing here with the campaign, you can actually change it. So if you wanna do mobile, you write um, link clicks um, for specific, write those specific websites. So I would do um, Young Goddess, link clicks, and if I'm doing specific products, I would do makeup. Then I would put Young Goddess, makeup, um, link clicks, and then I'll do mobile. So then I know where this ad is, where it's going, and what it is by first glance. Because once this gets taken over to Ad Manager, the only name you see is the name of the campaign. And if all of your campaigns say the exact same name, you won't know which is which or which is working the best. You'll have to like kind of go digging in each one and that takes up precious time. So this is where you would create your ad. You would put the images, what kind of image you want to do. If you want to do a video, if you want to do a slideshow. Um, the wonderful thing about Facebook is that they give you access to wonderful stock images, very pretty ones from Shutterstock, which is really nice. And you just click in the type that you want, or you can add your own images or your own videos. See right here is where you would add your Facebook fan page. And I will show you how um, in a later video on how to create a Facebook fan page. This is where you put your website URL and everything. So right here, any um, anything that you do on the outside here gets displayed. So we're gonna use that picture. Click done. And it shows up right over here. So this is kind of what your ad would look like.
And as soon as you make a change over here, it pops up over here. And you can change everything to exactly how you want it to be. And this is where you would click track conversions with my Facebook pixel. It is important that you track conversions on every single one of your face on every single one of your ads so that you can retarget those people who clicked your ads. Okay, so that's how you make an ad in Power Editor. Um, I will be doing a more in-depth video on how to do that. Uh